For black people in this country, we are battling two plagues. The COVID uh, plague is actually the second one. The first one is HIV. And there's some troubling new information about it coming out of Florida. According to a new report by the Williams Institute at UCLA's School of Law, there's been an, uh, at least 358 convictions for HIV-related crimes in Florida since 1986, and it has cost Florida taxpayers $12 million. And the Institute found some uneven numbers in HIV sentencing. For example, although black people made up 45% of the population living with HIV in Florida in 2018, they accounted for 57% of HIV-related prison sentences. But that's not actually the entire part of the story that I want you to focus on tonight. Focus on this. HIV prosecutions are heavily a Southern phenomenon, and the majority of people who are caught up in it are black. And the majority of people who are prosecuted are not only black, they are black women, and they are often sex workers. When the Williams Institute broke down sex work-related HIV sentences by race, it's black women who accounted for the most sentences at 44%, versus 38% for white women, 16% for black men, and just 2% for white men. Joining me now to discuss is the founding executive director at the Williams Institute and a co-author of the study on HIV criminalization in Florida, Brad Sears. Mr. Sears, thank you so much for joining us. We were excited to do this story, not because it's a good news story, but because it's an important story to do. Uh, we were happy to have you on. Um, yeah, thank you for first, having I want me. You to just, and, absolutely. First, I want you to just explain to our viewers why this is an important story to discuss and how detrimental HIV criminalization is, because I think that for a lot of people who are watching this program tonight, they look at it and say, yes, throw the book at them. They knew they had a disease. They were going to risking. Talk to us about why that is a bad strategy. Yeah, I think that this is not about behaviors. It's usually not about bad behaviors. It's about assist black people to be disproportionately infected with HIV in this country, and then a criminal justice system that disproportionately impacts black people. And so if you make out of a crime out of that disease, you're gonna see the numbers like in this report. So most, um, over 90% of the arrests and convictions for HIV crimes in Florida and across the country they do not require transmission of the HIV virus. They and they don't even require any conduct that can transmit the virus. That's true for solicitation, for sex work. Who gets arrested for sex work? Someone that the police decide looks suspicious on the street, and usually they entrap or just observe behavior on the street. There's no sex being had. There's no behavior that can transmit the virus. You can get arrested for one of these crimes for loitering with the intent to engage in sex work, so, so you're not or the intent to solicit. Right. So it's basically standing on the street looking suspicious. But 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 does it also does it criminalize, criminalizing uh, HIV people with HIV also have the effect of pushing down uh, testing for HIV? Uh, I mean, it, it, when you when you make that much of a stigma of it, and then also you tell people. If you know and you do it, then the penalty is even stiffer. Then it then it then it kind of works against people getting tested. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, usually when people are having sex, there's only two people around. So it's a he said he said she said or he said he said she said she said. But there's just one one person against the other telling the story about what was disclosed and what was not. So it makes people with HIV feel very vulnerable to disclose because if they get in a fight with their partner, there's a fallout, that person can just turn around and say, you know, they didn't disclose to me and, and have one of these crimes prosecuted. So it really deters testing and it deters disclosure. So why, why is it the cluster of states that have uh, uh, crimes against, uh, you know, HIV criminalization laws on the books, why are so many of them in the South? So uh, over 30 states have these, so they're throughout the country, but a lot of the enforcement is happening in the South 
and in the Midwest. And um, I've actually had the opportunity to speak with prosecutors um, and, and, you know, and talk with them and say, hey, these, these uh, crimes are being forced for behaviors that can't even transmit the virus. Why are you using them? They use them because they have high sentences. And so once they know someone is HIV positive, uh, usually a misdemeanor for some of these crimes switches to a felony. The sentences become five, 10, even 25 years in some cases, so they can get people to plead to these crimes. And I think what we're seeing, uh, particularly in the South, uh, is very active police departments uh, going, uh, going after uh, low-income uh, people and people of color. Brad Sears, thank you for joining me tonight. This is a very important story. This, this disease is still ravaging in the, uh, the black community, particularly in the South. Anything we can do to get the word out and, 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 and you know, kind of ameliorate this issue and illuminate this issue, I think is a good thing. So thank you so much for your time tonight. Great, thank you for having me.